Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson from the Bible with me, Pastor Doug. As always, you can download activity sheets for this lesson and don't forget to subscribe so we can bring you more videos just like this one. I'm excited to get started, so let's do it. Hey, check this out. This is a Bible, <laughs> a really big Bible. So big, you can use it for weightlifting or holding things down if it gets really windy. <laughs> but of course, the best thing to use it for is reading and discovering more about God and his plan for us. Today, we're gonna be talking about patience. You know, that thing that your parents usually tell you you need to practice, like when they're making dinner and you're so hungry, when's it gonna be ready? And your mom or dad say, be patient. Or when you're waiting in line and you just want it to be your turn already and your teacher says, be patient. <laughs> That's right. The Bible has a lot to say about patient. God tells us that we can show patience. He tells us that love itself is patient. He even says that patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And of course, we can see how Jesus himself showed patience. Hey, why did the doctor go out of business? Uh, I don't know, why? Because she had no patience. Oh, that's not good. Perhaps they should have taught her that in medical school. What? No, it, it's a joke. She had no patience? Yeah, that's too bad. No, no, like patience, patience. You said that already. Ugh, never mind. But you know, it's not just all the things the Bible says, even some of the things the Bible doesn't say teaches us about patience. I know, I know, let me explain. Have you ever wondered what happened between the Old Testament and the New Testament? See, the Old Testament is the first part of the Bible and the New Testament is the second. But in between, there was 400 years of, well, waiting. The people of God were waiting patiently for God's timing. God was going to send the Savior, the Messiah, Jesus. And they just had to wait. So you see, even when the Bible doesn't say anything, it teaches us about God's timing and about how we can show patience. Patience is about hope and peace. We have hope in the promises of God and peace knowing that they'll come at the proper time. So what I wanna share with you today is how God rewards patience. You know, the people of God were patiently waiting for Jesus the Messiah to come, and that's the story of Christmas. But we're waiting patiently for Jesus to come a second time. Who's coming a second time? Oh, hi, Dusty. Yeah, I was telling the kids how Jesus is coming back. Jesus? Jesus is coming, where, here? Well, here is into the earth, yeah. Ooh, I've gotta get ready. Uh, I've gotta brush my fur and, and probably brush my teeth too. How's my breath? <sighs> oh, oh, and it's been like a year since I've had a bath. I gotta have a bath. Uh, yeah, you don't say. Well, well, when's all this happening? Give me a time frame here. How many sleeps? Well, I, I don't know how many sleeps. I, I mean, that's what I said. Nobody knows. What do you mean you don't know? Is he coming now? Um, what about no, now? Doesn't seem like it. How about now? Still no. Uh, how about now? I don't think so. Is he coming now? No. How about now? No. How about now? What about nope. now? How about now? Nope. How about Still now? Still no. How about now? Okay, Dusty, <laughs> this lesson is on patience, but nobody's this patient, okay? We should really keep things moving. So um, listen, why don't you go take a seat with the kids and we'll get on with things. All right, I'll go take a seat. Okay, perfect. Now, to kick things off, I've invited our friends Anthony and Amy to talk a little bit more about patience. So, uh, hey guys. Hey, hey Doug. Doug. Well, I'm Amy, and this is Anthony. Hey. What's wrong? I'm just waiting, and it's taking forever. 
What are you waiting for? I'm waiting for my ice to freeze, but it's, like I said, taking a really, really long time. Well, first of all, that's gotta go in a freezer. I know that, I was just checking on it. It's just taking hours and I'm getting pretty impatient. Yeah, you know, it does take hours to freeze water. <sighs> this is, ugh, I don't think I can do this. I think he needs to learn a little bit about patience. Have you guys ever had a time when you've had to be patient? Maybe when your mom's baking cookies and, oh, it just smells so good. Okay, and... I've got another idea. Okay. I painted this board. And yep. while I wait for this to dry, I'll wait for my water to freeze. It's perfect. Well, both of those things take hours to do. Hours? Yeah. <sighs> okay, where were we, you know, oh yeah, cookies. When they're in the oven and they smell so good and you just, you have to be patient though to have a cookie, right? Okay, and... one more thing. Okay. I planted this seed, so while I wait for this to grow, I'll wait for my paint to dry while I wait for my water to freeze. It's perfect, watch. Um, what, I... <sighs> Nothing's happening. Yeah, that takes even more than just a couple hours to go. <sighs> is it just me, or is this lesson making you really hungry? I could go for a snack right about now. Yeah, where are those cookies she keeps talking about? Come on, I know where the teacher keeps a stash of crackers. Really? Yep, all we need are some bolt cutters. You know what, kids? In the Bible, there's a lot of times where people had to be a lot more patient than just, you know, a couple hours. They had to wait years. And a good example of that is Simeon and Anna from the Bible. But I'm gonna let Mr. Doug tell you that story. My eyes deceive me. Oh, I think that's... <laughs> hey there, are you ready to hear the story of Simeon and Anna? Perfect. Let me start by asking you a question. If there was one person that you could meet, who would it be? Well, for Simeon and Anna, that person was the Messiah, the savior of the world, the one that God had promised to send to set all of his people free. Let me tell you the story. You, of course, know the story of Christmas, where Jesus came down, born of Mary, and sent into the family of David, through Joseph, his descendant. Well, when Jesus was just eight days old, Mary and Joseph brought him to Jerusalem to fulfill all that was required of them by the law of Moses. And while they were walking through Jerusalem, they made their way to the temple. There was a man named Simeon. Simeon was very old, and he had been waiting a long time for this day. You see, Simeon was a good and godly man. The Bible says that the Spirit of God was with him, and also that the Holy Spirit made Simeon a very special promise. You see, God had told Simeon that he would not die until he saw the Lord's Messiah, that would be Jesus, face to face. So on that fateful day when Mary and Joseph brought the baby Jesus into the temple courts, Simeon saw him and rejoiced. He praised God. He even rushed over to Mary and Joseph, greeting them, and he took the baby Jesus in his arms. He couldn't believe it. The day had finally come. He lifted up the baby Jesus, praising God, and said this, Lord, you are king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all people. It is a light to be given to those who aren't Jews. It will bring glory to your people, Israel. But Simeon didn't stop there. Simeon also spoke prophetically over uh, Mary and Joseph as well. You see, he told them this. This child is going to cause many people in Israel to fall and to rise. God has sent him, but many will speak against him. The thoughts of many hearts will be known. A sword will wound your own soul too. But before they left Jerusalem, they met someone else, not just Simeon, but another older lady named Anna. 
and Anna was 84 years old. Well, at least 84 years old. That's a long time to be waiting. You see, she too spent every day and night in the temple courts, praying and fasting and waiting to see the Lord's anointed. When she saw Jesus, she also had some special words to give to Mary and Joseph and to speak over Jesus as well. Now is the time that Jerusalem will be set free. This is the one we have all been waiting for. Well, after this incredible visit to Jerusalem, Mary and Joseph began the long journey home. And boy, did they have a lot to talk about. What were all these things that people were saying about their son, Jesus? You know, we have to wait for things too. But when we wait with hope and peace, just like Simeon and Anna, we can trust that God will reward that patience. And in time, we'll reap the benefits. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. And I hope that you can show patience by remembering both Simeon and Anna. Okay, time to go back to Bethlehem. Actually, we're going to Galilee now, back to Nazareth. Wow, Anna was 84 years old? Actually, in some translations, the Bible says she was a widow of 84 years, meaning you have to add the years when she was a kid and then a wife. You mean she was even older than 84? It's very possible she was closer to 100 years old. Wow, that's one patient granny, I'll say. The people of God and all of creation had to be extremely patient for the coming of Jesus. But God knew what he was doing. He knew just the proper time. And he knows the proper time when Jesus is going to come back again. You know, we're waiting for big things like Jesus to come back, but we're also waiting for small things too. And we can be faithful and trust in God to provide for those. Whether it's something fun like waiting for the cookies in the oven to be done, or something even more challenging, like waiting for God to answer a very heartfelt prayer. Well, that brings us to our Bible verse. And that means that we've got to do the Go Get Your Bible dance. All right, here we go. Go get your Bible, go get your Bible, go get your Bible. Okay, our Bible verse today comes from the book of Galatians, which is found in the New Testament. Let's start at the first book of the New Testament, Matthew, and go down to Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians. All right, now in Galatians, you want to look for the big number six, chapter six, and then the little number nine, verse nine. Let's read it together. Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. You see, Paul was reminding the people of Galatia that sometimes things require patience. We have to keep doing good. That means keep trusting God, keep helping other people, loving them, and loving God too, until God decides it's time for our efforts to bear fruit. So I want to encourage you to hang in there. Keep doing good. Don't give up. At the proper time, God will reward you. All right, everyone. It's time to test how much we learned with our game show. All right. Welcome back, everyone, to today's game show. That's right. The only game show at the end of this lesson that asks, what did we learn? Well, let's discover who our contestant is for today. Why, it's our old pal, Dusty! Welcome back, Dusty! How are you feeling? 
Yeah, hi, dude. Thanks. Uh, actually, I was wondering if Excellent. I... Excellent. All right, Dusty. Now, we've talked about patience today. A lot about patience. We learned about Simeon and Anna. We learned about God's patience. We learned about the intertestamental period. And of course, we talked about pizza. Huh? Pizza? What's that? I don't, I don't we know. didn't talk about pizza. pizza. Oh, but now we have talked about pizza. Well, oh, good. Well, that's covered then. Excellent. All right. Now that we're ready, you better focus in, Dusty, because here comes the question. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Dusty, you have 30 seconds on the clock. How many years did the people of God have to wait between the Old and the New Testaments? Was it A, 84 years, B, 400 years, C, 1 million years, or D, 10 light years? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, uh, this is a toughie. Let's see, uh, light years, well, that measures distance. Uh, normally I count in dog years, so that's seven times, uh, carry the two. I uh, answer with a question. Uh, well, what is B? B, 400 years. Well, we have a winner. <laughs> oh, excellent. Well done, my friend. How do you feel? Oh, great, great, really great. And I just want to say... Wonderful. Back to you, Doug. Waiting 400 years? That's impossible. People don't even live that long. Eh, I think I could wait 400 years. As long as I had an endless supply of pizza bagels and video games, I could wait for eternity. That's not waiting. That's mind-numbing distraction. Same thing. Have you been listening? Patience is about hope and peace. You're just jealous I can be more patient than you. That's not patience. Now who's lost their patience? I heard that. Well, that's all the time we have for today. And although that's a little bit sad, I'm sure that we can all be patient until we see each other again. All right, let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. So many people, all the world in fact, waited so long to see him come. And you rewarded them for that patience. Lord, now we wait for Jesus to return and we do so patiently. But I also pray that you would reward those who are patiently waiting for other things, answered prayer and whatever the case may be. Jesus, would you be with us this week in all that we say and do, Amen. All right. Thanks so much for joining. We'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, kids. If you'd like to do some of our activity sheets, head on over to faithfield.com slash curriculum.